I was living in Picton in the 1990s. I went out on, on the water in a storm. I saw these water spouts, wow, rising up from the surface of the ocean and uh, like mini tornadoes and it was, um, I, and I could see the white water was like boiling mud pools or something, you know. I sketched a bit but did no substantial art with the experience for 20 years. It would resurface in connection to the idea that we are the architects of our mind, body and spirit. Over the years I've incorporated recurring themes in my artwork about all that. One of these themes is architectural blueprints. I step beyond my initial ideas into how external forces try to redesign our feeling for the environment and our social culture. And there were blueprints about a dynamic South Pacific island or supercharged bagpipes, a dynamic football, even a personal shopping robot. <laughs> And artistic concepts, you know, like blueprints for portraits and still lifes, uh, dynamic landscapes. Making the images cartoonish and light-hearted was deliberate just to disguise that deeper serious issues. And in 2014, my stormy Picton experience came back into frame with um, dynamic ocean. In my research about this idea, I came across a painting by William Hodges. With this particular painting, a representation of the Marlborough Sounds, he was trying to incorporate this kind of like heroism into a scenic formula and mess up preconceived ideas about landscape painting and the dynamics of all that. I was amused to discover these parallels in his work. The connection with water spouts, the Marlborough Sounds, and his mission to redesign perceptions about landscape painting. He was pointing to the fact that who is actually in control of what we see as being normal. His painting really got to me. Eh? With Dynamic Ocean, I wanted more than a cartoonish design. I um, wanted to make it loose and mess up the idea of draftsmanship to borderline chaos or a visual gibberish. Anyway, it came to pass a couple of years later. I decided to paint over it. Lots of artists paint over their artworks for many different reasons. In the past couple of years, I had been looking into another thing of uh, Celtic knots and design puzzles. I was inspired by looking into a bowl of spaghetti. I did some skateboards and drawings and with all the uh, design images out there on the internet um, I was really looking for something that I could call my own. Drawings of what I would call life knots. Life knot is not about being tangled or tied up with life. It's more about <laughs> recognising and engaging and how we can unravel ourselves. I wanted an industrial look, you know, like um, air conditioning ducting, and then to make it more organic, you know, with old moss and lichen growing on it. But if it looks a bit like, you know, elephant trunks, then that's okay too. <laughs> I filled out the like knot within its frame with just a hint of surrounding cloud and shadow play to suggest an outdoor scene. Sort of surreal and subtle sense overall that this is the landscape of our mind. That in reflection, we need our left and right brains to um, intertwine in order to be a whole person. I want to get lost in the detail, you know, the abstract and the beauty of our whole body life experience. 
I mean, eventually it gets close to believing that life is not a straight line of values and conformity to somebody else's rule. Um, and it's here in the South Pacific that we live in a culture of the curve. And I was really happy to um, find this particular knot with the two ends uh, intertwined. I was really happy about that. In the end, I make art for myself so I can figure life out. And um, I'm really happy to share that with you.